a look at this, right? You might remember we've had one or two run-ins with Just Stop Oil, uh, not just in this particular neck of the woods, but all over the country. There's been a load of Just Stop Oil protesters up at somewhere called Kingsbury Oil Terminal in Warwickshire, right? Now, many of them have now ended up behind bars and arrested because they kept breaking the law. However, there's one particular piece of footage that we've discovered today from a farmer, a local farmer called Charles Goadby. Have a look at this. So here we are in the heart of the beautiful Warwickshire countryside and yet if I look through this hedge just here there's rubbish dumped everywhere. You can see what we've got sleeping bags, plastic bags full of rubbish, liners, more plastic, plastic bottles, plastic chairs, more plastic chairs, absolute mess. And all this crap has been left here by the Just Stop Oil campaigners. If we look here, you can see covered up here, concreted in one of the tunnels where they've been trying to dig underneath this main road here, right outside the Kingsbury Oil Terminal. And there's more concreted areas there where they've been filling in the holes. So what I want to know from somebody senior at Just Stop Oil, how is this acceptable? People dumping crap over our British countryside, polluting it, destroying the countryside and putting our wildlife at risk with rubbish. How can you justify this and how can you tell me this is acceptable? Charles joins us now because um, he's pretty upset about all of this, quite naturally, uh, and he's asking for Just Stop Oil to give him an explanation. Charles, a very good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Mike. Thank Thanks you. very much indeed for, for joining us and, and thank you for, for sharing that video that you did, which I spotted this morning. Um, just talk us through um, how you discovered it and uh, is it on land that you work, generally speaking? Yes, yeah, so this is on part of our land that we rent, so it's, it's ground that we're working all year round. And we just happened to be over there yesterday, driving along the hedge, and we knew that this was the area that the protesters were in yeah. uh, weeks back. But you could see through the hedge all of this rubbish mm. and we noticed a big hole in the hedge as well. So when we actually looked in there, we could see what was actually there. It was mm. horrendous, absolute mess. And an awful lot of these characters are putting pictures and, and videos of themselves up now because many of them have been arrested again and have been put to, put, sent to prison, um, which I'm entirely in favour of. Have you had any response yet from Just Stop Oil as to why they've left such a horrible mess behind? So I've had a lot of response uh, from various peoples saying that they wouldn't have been allowed back on site because there was injunctions against them. And I have just uh, noticed I've had a message directly from Just Stop Oil themselves who have said we're completely right to be horrified by this and they've asked for details, they'd like to come and clear the mess up. Mm. Well, it's about... What I need to also point out to them is it's not just the mess that they've left because if you actually look through, and it doesn't really show it on the video, there's tracks all the way through this hedge, up and down. They've hollowed out the whole hedge and it's done some quite severe damage. So I want to know who's going to go and actually repair that damage, replace the hedge and put new hedge plants mm. in. No. But this is unfortunately the way that these people operate. You know, they seem to think that the world is literally theirs to, to plunder with whatever they wish to do to it. Um, I've also seen some criticism of you uh, on, the, on the Twitter feed from various environmentalists saying, oh, have you seen the damage that, you know, digging for oil does and all that? That's not really the point. The point is, is that these are people who are disrupting a perfectly legal, legal business, causing damage to the environment, which they propose to protect. And they're just hypocrites, aren't they? Yeah, I think they are in this case. I mean, everybody's got the right to um, fight for what they believe in. But when you're doing it by penalising lawful, lawful businesses and small businesses, mm. now, not just the oil companies, it's the knock-on effect that that's had to so many small businesses in this area. At the time, we were desperate for fuel for our tractors to be able to grow the crops for these people to eat, and we couldn't get onto fuel for the tractors. Right. So, we were just sitting doing nothing and eventually when we did we're paying double the price of what it should have been just mm. to get out of it well this is it i mean at a time when people were desperate for fuel um they were blockading oil terminals and you know i don't have any sympathy with any of them who say oh now i'm in prison well you should have known that and quite frankly some of them are hysterically ridiculous about the fact that you know they're not going to be able to provide a future for their children well maybe they should think about that and do something else yeah, well, the ridiculous thing here, the actual tunnels that have been concreted in that I show, 
it was the uh, uh, the police, I presume, that concreted them in. Their plan was to dig these tunnels underground and underneath the main road, and then they wanted the main road closing, the whole access to the old terminals, for their health and safety. Right. It's unsafe for vehicles to go over. And it's just how ridiculous it's mm. getting. Yeah, so they've obviously given some thought to this and, and you know, made themselves into the victim uh, of the of the of this whole situation. But but they're clearly not. I don't know what we do about it. I mean, because as as, a, as somebody who works the land, you must be so frustrated because I imagine that you, like many people in in the business that you're in, are, tr are trying to be as as sort of preservative and as and as keen on the environment as anyone. A absolutely, a everything about farming this day and age is about working with nature and not working against it. And you've got to remember that. Farming, working the land, growing crops, we're probably the first ones that are going to feel the effects of climate change. Yeah. And we certainly are at the minute. So we want to do things to improve the environment, to help mitigate climate change. But at the same time, we've got to produce the highest quality, most sustainable food that's affordable for everybody. And that's the important thing. Everybody wants feeding yes. and wants to eat. Right. And I mean, there's a reason why fossil fuels are efficient. It's because, you know, we discovered them and civilization led us to use them. And that's what we should be using. And it's all very well to say we should stop using them. But, you know, we haven't got an alternative right now. But listen, Charles, good luck with it all. Thank you very much indeed. Let us know. Keep in touch and let us know what the Just Stop All people are going to do uh, by way of making reparations to the damage that they have caused. I mean, what absolute and utter hypocrites these people are. Spend all day, every single day of the year, telling you how we're all in a terrible climate disaster and the land is going to be ruined. And then they go and ruin the land with plastic. Brilliant. Well done, guys.